Okay, if we're all set, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and welcome to Harry Carey's Italian Steakhouse. Thank you for being here today for what we think is a, a very important and exciting announcement for the city of Chicago and the sport of triathlon. My name is Chuck Menke. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for USA Triathlon. Uh, we have a couple short videos to show you today, so we're going to jump right in and show you one now. Hopefully. I have to be in the United Nations also. <laughs> it's a universal issue. <laughs> A little mood setter there to get everybody uh, in the spirit of triathlon. On September 25th, 1974, the world's first ever triathlon was held here in the United States. Since then, the collective beauty of swim, bike, and run has spread across the world. Today, the sport is one year removed from its fourth Summer Olympic Games and one year away from celebrating its 40th anniversary. Over that time, triathlon has become so ingrained in the Olympic movement that the second most popular race is officially called, well, the Olympic distance. In 2011, under the leadership of Rob Urbach, USA Triathlon made a bold decision to submit a bid to the International Triathlon Communion, Union to host the highest level of Olympic distance racing in the United States. That proposal was accepted by the ITU and President Marisol Casado, and in the spring of 2012 and 2013, the ITU World Triathlon Series staked its claim in the sport's birthplace, San Diego, California. It represented a whole new stage in the U.S. for Olympic distance racing, creating greater awareness of this fast and furious version of the pro sport that showcased a draft legal style of racing, unlike any other cycling event or triathlon event in the country. The past two years in San Diego feature the top men's and women's elite triathletes from around the world, including Olympic medalists from the London, Beijing, Athens, and Sydney Summer Games. In addition, each year, more than 2,000 age group athletes from 42 states and 16 countries competed on the same exact course as the pros, something that makes this sport so unique. 
And today we're here to make a special announcement regarding the next chapter for the ITU World Triathlon Series. Here to tell us more, I'd like to introduce, starting to my immediate right, Deputy Mayor for the City of Chicago, Steve Koch, International Triathlon Union President Marisol Casado, USA Triathlon Chief Executive Officer Rob Erbach, three-time paratriathlon world champion Melissa Stockwell, and Chicago Sports Commission Executive Director Sam Stark. Before we start with some opening comments from each of the speakers on the dais and then open it up to questions, I'd like to mention that we'll be working very closely with the Chicago Land Triathlon community, including the 22 USA Triathlon certified clubs in the area. So we're excited to have several local youth triathletes here today from the Peterson Performance Lab Youth Triathlon team, um, as well as Coach Brett Peterson. Uh, to perform a brief demonstration on a triathlon transition after the press conference. So I hope everybody will stick around for that. Uh, and we will have lunch afterward. It is truly an honor for us to be here in Chicago, and we've been fortunate to receive the unwavering support of the city throughout this process. We're thrilled to have Steve Koch here today on behalf of the city and the mayor's office, and he's agreed to lead things off for us. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Steve. Thank you. Thanks very much. And uh, on behalf of the mayor, uh, Chicago is really thrilled to showcase the great city we have Ooh. as the host of the 2014, 2016, 2017, and 2018 International Triathlon Union World Series, and really most excitingly, the 2015 grand final of that series. As all of you know, the mayor is an avid sports fan, athlete, actually a triathlete himself, and Mayor Emanuel is really thrilled that Chicago can serve as a platform for the ITU's promotion of a more active lifestyle. So first, I'd like to thank ITU President Marisol Casado for being here. It's tremendous to have her here. As some of you may know, Marisol is really one of the leaders in world sports. She was named as one of the top 10 sports innovators by Sports Business Magazine, and it's really our privilege to welcome her to Chicago today. And it's with enormous pride that Chicago joins the ranks of London, Madrid, Yokohama, Stockholm, Auckland, and other cities as a ITU World Series host city. In addition to what we all know as the unique sounds and sights of Chicago that we now look forward to sharing with the world, uh, our really extraordinary resource of Lake Michigan is going to be an incredible backdrop to provide competitors with a swimming course that's really pretty unique from the usual ocean course that uh, most triathletes in their most triathlons in the world get to experience. We think Chicago is going to serve as really the perfect venue for the series as the city's long tradition of merging people from across the globe is emblematic of the event itself, just as the ITU World Series brings people together so does Chicago. So the ITU World Series is going to provide these incredible athletes international acclaim as the third largest US market, popular tourist destination. We think Chicago has the potential to, to, to tremendously increase the visibility of the sport, the event, and certainly most deservedly the athletes themselves. I think Mayor Emanuel has been pretty public about discussing the importance of sports as essential to the city's economic development, and the ITU World Series is no exception. Just a few statistics that came from Sam Stark's Chicago Sports Commission. We estimate that in 2014 alone, the event's gonna bring roughly 6,000 more visitors to the city, provide 10,000 hotel room nights, and have an economic impact of over $9 million. According to the commission, the economic impact increases each year, as the event is hosted, and by 2018, we think the impact will be around $15 million a year. In, very importantly, this event is broadcast in 160 countries on 45 networks, bringing international attention to the city of Chicago, and hopefully in fire, inspiring all those people who see just the wonderful sights, sounds, and sort of feel of Chicago from that event to come here and visit. And we just are really excited about the ability to use this event to introduce the city to a global audience. So we're thrilled to have the event coming, and I'm tremendously pleased to be able to hear, be here to welcome Marisol here. So turn it over yeah. to you. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Well, first of all, I really would like to, uh, to share my feeling about Chicago because I think it's, an, it's something very special. I've been here, I think it was 91. And at that moment, I, I was the founder member of, of the Spanish Federation. 
as, as you see, I'm a Spanish. <laughs> I think it was obvious. <laughs> but, uh, 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 and uh, I, I came to Chicago, and at that time already, uh, Chicago held an, uh, a triathlon of 1,000 people. Huh? When, when we are talking about this, then uh, I stay like, like now very, very few times. This time only for 24 hours, but at that time I think I was like three days. And I get in my heart that really Chicago it was the place for, for, for triathlon. Then when, when uh, this, uh, this uh, last year they were talking about the possibility to come to Chicago, I, I try not to be so excited about it, but <laughs> believe me, I, I was really, really happy when in Yokohama we decided just to, to go to, to, to came here to, to Chicago for the triathlon. I think it's one of the most beautiful cities in the, in the world, really. And now I travel a lot, I know, <laughs> I know many places. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to my papers because as I told you before, <laughs> my English is not as perfect as I would like to be. It is a pleasure to be here in beautiful Chicago to announce that uh, ITU World Triathlon Grand Final will be held here in 2015, as well as a World Triathlon Series already next year. Chicago has a strong history of hosting world-class sporting events and incredible long list of athletics accomplishment. USA Triathlon, along with our partner, Lagadere uh, Unlimited, has also been active in organizing World Triathlon Series raced in the last several years, as he told before. We are confident their combined experience and Chicago's active community will produce an excellent environment for the grand final. In addition to crowning the 2015 ITU World Championships, the event will also name world champion in junior and under 23 categories as well as para triathlon. And you have to understand that para triathlon will be in the program of the Olympic Games already in 2015. 16 for the first time. The week will also be filled with thrilling action from thousands of age group athletes. These athletes will travel from around the world for a chance to call themselves the best in triathlon. With uh, triathlon becoming more and more popular each year, the 2012 World Championships race enjoyed record high participation. This year in London, we will welcome more than 6,000 triathletes to participate. We also expect thousands of international athletes to travel to Chicago for a fantastic grand final in two years, as well as the World Triathlon Race in 2014. I have no doubt the vibrant city of Chicago will provide the perfect backdrop for this event during an excellent weekend of family-friendly sport action for the citizens of Chicago. After all, triathlon is a sport for anyone can do, regardless of age or gender. We look forward to working with the city of Chicago, USA Triathlon and La Cadere Unlimited over the next two years to bring our wonderful sport to Chicago. Thank you very much on behalf of ITU for giving us this tremendous opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marisol. Mm -hmm. and thank you, Steve. I'd just like to make mention that, you know, here we are in the beginning of the triathlon season and Marisol has been traveling for I don't know how many weeks, probably. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't like to count. I think my, my <laughs> husband has the list. <laughs> it's, it's grueling travel, no doubt. Marisol is a, a happy warrior on, on the road, and, and uh, uh, she made the trip especially here from Spain, all the way from Spain, just to make this announcement. So we really appreciate that, and this announcement wouldn't be complete without you here. Yeah. Okay, I, I have, uh, I have to, to say that uh, it's a great honor for me just to... to represented triathlon. As, as everyone knows, it's, uh, it's a wonderful sport. The athletes are wonderful. I think it's a very clean sport. I think it's, it's uh, now also the, the, 
we were considered immediately as an inclusive sport. Just that's why we are in the program of the of the Paralympic in already in 2016. And and believe me, I don't count how much I travel, but I I do it. Uh, really, I really like it very much. I feel a very positive energy, and well, I have to say that I combine this uh, for with my position as as uh, I was. I had the honor uh, for triathlon to be uh, uh, IOC member since 2010. Then I think just combining these two powerful tools, I think uh, is very interesting. And of course, I have to say that also I'm promoting, as I, I was before with Chicago, uh, the, the, the bidding for the Olympic to, uh, 2020 from my, for my city. My city really is Madrid. Right? I was born, I live. Then it's, it's something, it's a very, very, very special uh, situation for me in, in my life, and I really like to do it. I do it with great, great pressure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again. Um, as CEO of USA Triathlon, the national governing body, Rob Burbeck is orchestrating the vision for the sport every day. And when he took the reins a couple of years ago, one of his primary goals was to raise the level uh, of awareness and prominence for the sport. And one of his, uh, his first goals was to bring the ITU World Triathlon Series uh, to the U.S. That was a big part of his plan. Um, Rob, can you talk about the significance <coughs> of this announcement? Uh, sure. First of all, before that, I also want to thank uh, the mayor's office and, and the ITU and Marisol and, and really compliment the Chicago Sports Commission. Sam Stark and his team did a very good job in bringing this event and a little bit of an upset to Chicago. So uh, thanks much for the work and good luck. And the vote's coming up for, uh, for Madrid in, in September. Okay. So uh, good luck to, to Marisol in Madrid. Uh, this is a real, real big, huge impact for us, and we'll take it back in time. Chuck mentioned that triathlon was essentially invented, and there's all sorts of stories about 1974, who's fitter, you know, runners, swimmers, or cyclists, <laughs> and that evolved into triathlon. That evolved into, as Marisol alluded to, a very unique community, a, a community that's very, very inclusive, very collegial. It's, it's very different, it's something that triathletes don't really necessarily share with their single sport brethren in the sense that if you're in a triathlon, Triathletes are notoriously very, very competitive and, and hardworking, but also when you get passed by a competitor, you usually cheer them on, and you don't, you don't always see that. So there's something that we share that's the universality of the positive aspects of sport that I think Marisol is also driving to import around the world in the 120 countries or so that now manage triathlon federations. Let me take it back in time. So 74, California, the hotbed of triathlon is born. So Americans are sort of dying the sport for years and years and years. And then in the mid-90s, 1997, the date is, triathlon gets included in the Sydney Olympics. So we kind of rest on our laurels and thought, we're dominating the sport, you know, we're gonna go and win all the medals in the Olympics. Not the case, because other countries were catching up and investing in their triathlon programs and driven by the International Triathlon Union that was promoting the Olympic style of racing. And I want to talk about that for a minute. Most triathlons, you know, you know, we're great participation. You know, we have a couple million people in this country do triathlons. The growth has been white hot for about 10 straight years. It's the new golf in the boardroom. We have a lot of participants. But, you know, thus far, we haven't really mirrored that on the spectator side. And I think what this format has done for the world is draw more attention because the racing is fast and furious. On the elite side, they're approaching world-class speeds in all three sports. The transitions, as we'll see the junior group do, it's controlled chaos. If you watch them flying off the bikes, <laughs> almost hitting full speed stride <laughs> after a dismount on the bike, or sometimes the, the mount on the bike can be a little treacherous if you mistime that a little bit. But it's, it's all practice skill. And the beauty about this race, and we bring this to Chicago, it's lap style racing. So instead of a long endurance triathlon where you might see your friends or family pass by for 35 seconds in five hours. If you bring your family, you might be accused of you know, having uh, child abuse. This is much different. It's very exciting, very intriguing because they're going all out, they're redlining the whole time. You'll see a lot of strategy on the bike, a lot of tactics, close Tour France style or Criterium style bike riding where there's team tactics involved and the run is all out, redlining, Sprint finishes, I can't wait. So it's exciting, and if you'll, you'll, you'll see the clips, and the ITU has done a great job in the course design, and we hope to bring a really exciting course here for spectators. We're making this into more of a spectator sport. 
From that standpoint, it helps draw more than mainstream media, more than mainstream sponsors, helps us to inspire more to our athletes. So we call that our virtuous cycle, the more the better in that case. Also for our athletes, it's very important. So typically, the grand finals have been in great locations, you know, Auckland, Budapest, Gold Coast, Australia, but our folks have been traveling. And the opportunity to race on home soil for the grand final to be part of our Olympic process and for the qualification is very, very important for our athletes. Our T Team USA folks, after today, they're going to be inspired to start training because they want to vie for world title. In the age group side, we send about 600 folks around the world every year to try to be on a podium, to be the top age grouper in the world. And the ability to do that in Chicago is going to stimulate demand for our sport as well as for you know, the pair of triathletes also that have an opportunity for, for a world title. And hopefully Melissa will be able to add to her hardware in a couple of years in, uh, in Chicago. So it's very, very important for us. It's important for our Olympic pipeline development to have this race at this city. Important for our community of sponsors and partners. Certainly important for the massive spectators that we hope to generate to having this event in Chicago. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. So, in as much as uh, this event in 2015 will serve as a, a U.S. Olympic qualifier for the 2016 Games in Rio, uh, it will also likely serve as a qualifier for the 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio, where triathlon, is, as Marisol indicated, will make its debut. So we're very excited about that. Um, hopefully I'm not telling tales out of school here, Rob, but um, we've got Melissa Stockwell here, and as many of you know, uh, she's an amazing individual with an amazing story. So before she speaks, we'd like to, to show a a piece that helps tell her story. As you said, I love our country. I grew up with a big passion for the American flag. And when I learned that being a part of the military and that American flag patch on your shoulder represented those colors, it was just kind of a, I don't know, whenever anyone asked what I want to do when I grew up, I wanted to be in the military. September 11th had happened before I was commissioned into the Army. And I mean, you kind of knew it wasn't a matter of if you were going to get pulled, it was more a matter of when. Um, I'd only been over there three weeks. We took off just like any other day, and about 10 minutes into the ride, went over this underpass, and this big feeling, this big explosion goes off, and uh, someone yelled out, IED, IED, and started to get out of the vehicle, just like a cocky vehicle, and I looked down, and we saw some blood, and I called out, I hurt, something happened to my leg, I hurt. I didn't know it at the time, but my leg had been severed, and the, when the blast from the bomb, and the bridge took the guardrail, whatever it is, it was, it was gone. I don't remember thinking my life was over. I don't know. It, it's, it sounds so optimistic to say, but I feel like I just thought, I just knew things were going to be okay. Before I was injured, I, I always kind of considered myself an athlete. So before, after I got my prosthetic leg, I learned to be independent. I knew that the next step would be involved in athletics. I realized that just because I was missing a leg, it didn't mean I had to hold back from doing anything I wanted to do. About eight months after I was injured, I learned about the U.S. Paralympics, and it was, I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer. What better way to not only represent the country I defended in Iraq with the U.S. in uniform, but athletics was becoming a, a way of life for me. Someone goes and finds out that they're good in the pool, but then they want to run also. And now you have this event, you can put all three together, you can challenge yourself, and you can be dedicated enough to make it happen. For our child that said, you're a sport in 2016. Come, start with us, learn to do all three sports, and maybe in 2016 you can be out there representing your country. Pretty inspiring. Melissa, as a Chicago native, can you help give the athletes perspective on this event? Yes. Um, so first off, thank you. It's very humbling to be sitting up here. Um, I'm honored to be part of this, annou uh, th this, this announcement and the excitement um, of being a Chicago resident and a triathlete, and I'm uh, very excited about it. So um, I've lived in Chicago for um, about six years, actually, and I've had the honor of calling it home uh, for the past six years. And I started my paratriathlon career here in Chicago. And it's really easy to do because you have the waters of Lake Michigan, you have the path along the lakefront where you ride on it and you see the beautiful skyline that really never gets old. And then you have this city of Chicago to run through. And as you're doing these workouts, if you need some motivation or you're having a tough time, all you really have to do is to look up and to see the skyline and to see the lake and the, the, the waterfront. And it really kind of keeps you motivated. It keeps you moving. So to be able to have these two races um, in June of next year for the World Series final, and then in 2015, the ITU World Final and the Paratriathlon World Championships. This is 
iconic because it's a year before the Rio Olympics and the Rio Paralympics where para triathlon will debut as a Paralympic sport. So not only do I get to compete on one of the wor world's biggest events on the World Para Triathlon Championships, but there are triathletes and para triathletes from around the world that get to come over to my backyard and compete alongside me in this beautiful city of Chicago and we get to show off our city and the history and the beauty and everything that it, that it has to offer. So as an athlete and as, and as a Chicago resident, I couldn't be more thrilled to host these races. And um, it's truly one of the greatest cities in the world. I'm looking forward to being out there on that course. So thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, the race course that Melissa and others uh, will follow features uh, the best of sh uh, Chicago's many landmarks, Millennium Park, Soldier Field, several museums and the Art Institute, Navy Pier, and the Magnificent Mile. Um, but what really makes this course so special is the finish line. As the athletes approach, they'll do a loop around Buckingham Fountain, uh, making for one of the most picturesque scenes possible. Um, so before we, we go to Sam, who's going to close us out here, um, we'd like to, fingers crossed, uh, show a 3D <laughs> animation of what the main venue is going to look like, and, and hopefully the deputy mayor doesn't have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. to give uh, credit where credit is due. Our, our friends with ITU put that together, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It, I like the music behind it. It kind of had a European feel to it there, didn't it? Um, you know, obviously, in order to make something like this happen, uh, you have to have strong partnerships, and we certainly have a strong partnership in the Chicago Sports Commission. Sam, we're privileged to be added to the <laughs> Chicago sports landscape, and thank you for help paving the way. Well, thank you very much. And, um, I do think that the course will, will prove to be something that's, uh, that's, that's so unique. I had the pleasure of being in Yokohama for the last uh, race and uh, don't know all the other courses uh, around the series, but, um, but, I, but I do believe that our course will prove to be something that's, uh, that's so special and, and quite spectacular, both from the athlete standpoint, from the media standpoint, and from the fan standpoint. Uh, let me also offer my <coughs> welcome to, uh, to the Marisol and, uh, and thanks to the ITU for, uh, for, for choosing Chicago. Uh, could not be more pleased that, uh, that we are now part of this uh, World uh, Triathlon Series family, and to have you here in Chicago means a lot for, uh, for this announcement, so thank you very much. Um, we're, we're, we're further excited about our partnership with USA Triathlon uh, and, and Rob Burback and his team. Uh, this is our uh, really our third uh, partnership within, within the, one of the U.S. national governing bodies in the Olympic sports, and, and we just couldn't be more excited to be, uh, to be uh, uh, working together with, uh, with USA Triathlon. I also want to recognize and thank Don Welsh. Uh, Don is uh, the president and CEO of Choose Chicago, and, you know, th this event would not be possible without Don and Choose Chicago's vision and leadership. Uh, where two plus years ago he decided that a sports commission was an element that, uh, that, that, that had to be had uh, here in Chicago for, for us to, uh, to, to get events like this. So uh, truly uh, thanks to you, Don, for, for your vision and leadership. You know, uh, on top of that, once it's decided, you have to have city support, and that has to come from, from the mayor's office, and, and uh, uh, both Steve and, and the mayor continue to, uh, to be supporters of, of events like this that, that bring 
the economic impact and, and the profile for, for our great city. So thanks to, uh, to, to you and your team. Um, it, it's literally been a year and a half plus maybe since we've started the discussions to, uh, with USA Triathlon and, and to try to get into this space and to be here today. Uh, a lot of work has gone on by a lot of people. I do want to recognize Cara Bachman, our business development manager for the Sports Commission. She spent an incredible amount of time keeping this event on our radar, on the, their radar. So uh, thanks to, uh, to Cara for, uh, for, for keeping this event here and, uh, and, and again for uh, helping us to get here today. I say all the time, sports tourism is a team sport. Uh, the fact that our friends here at Harry Carey's and uh, Grant DePorter and his team uh, you know, are willing to host this event and so many other people in the room from uh, uh, Aon and Barclays and On Peak and, and others, you know, they want to invest and they want to support uh, sports tourism. So we, we offer our thanks for your support to, uh, to everything that, that we do here. Um, we're, um, we're excited to, uh, to be part of the series. We look forward to it for, uh, for a lot of different reasons and um, uh, happy to uh, uh, turn the program over to anybody who has questions and, and back to you, Chuck. Yeah, thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, uh, up here. So yeah, we're gonna uh, uh, open it up to questions. We don't have any handheld mics, so I would just ask that you speak up, and if you could please just indicate your name and your media affiliation, that would be great. So any questions? Well, the, uh, there was uh, other cities that were that were bidding, and you know that some might have thought had some inherent advantages, and and uh, so I think there's speculation that uh, it would have landed elsewhere. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the, the the support from the city prevailed. The the natural beauty and the ability for Chicago to be on the global stage uh, won the day. Well, there's first a process for USA Triathlon to work with a local organizing committee to determine what we think is the optimum city. And then we bid then to the board to host the grand final through a process with the ITU. And then, and then we have to, to vote in the executive board? Yeah. 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 We, we study the different bidding, the different technical commission also study, propose, and then Bill. We, we, we were up because we uh, we uh, um, give the the 2014 uh, just uh, few few months ago only right? that was to to in Canada um, I, the Edmonton sorry Edmonton Canada. At that time, we already were talking about uh, Chicago. Huh? Then that was, uh, and, and we have also some some uh, interest for for other cities that they are already in the in the in the series. Huh? Then I, I think uh, finally we we were uh, uh, giving the possibility to Edmonton in, in the 14 few months ago, and then and bring uh, the possibility also, we, we were also working at that time with um, San Diego also, and uh, some, place in, uh, some places uh, in Europe. I think also Madrid was uh, thinking of, of uh, presenting, and we had also something, uh, some, something in, on, on the table, but finally I think uh, the, the, the best option for us it was Really, it's a couple. Oh. Uh, yes, yes. So, Los Angeles, uh, San Diego, uh, Chicago, Boston, Miami were all were all considered to be our bid city. Yes. 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 Well, correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think both are in the uh, in the media packet. I think uh, both the courses are the um, the elite is really focused in sort of the Grant Park area. It's a pretty good loop of um, of the Grant Park foot footprint. The uh, amateur one moves a little bit to the north, um, sort of more in the downtown Navy Pier uh, area. So. 
part of it. I'm like, sure. We're, we're still, frankly, working through some of the details on the um, uh, open race and the, the, the youth races. So um, that one, the amateur one, yeah, the, the amateur race. So that's a little bit TBD. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yes, we're, we're uh, you know, having conversations with uh, potential cross-promotional opportunities, but we feel that the, uh, the June race could actually feed into racing in, in two months later. For athletes, uh, like to, they're funny, like to establish a benchmark and see if they can beat it. So the idea is that on the amateur side, on the age group race, you can race in June not on the same course, but in a similar venue, an early season race, and set a goal to improve for your later season race. So we feel that the races will <coughs> feed across each other. There are other examples just across the country where they'll race at the exact same venue on a series of three or four races, and momentum builds towards the, at the end of the year. Uh, well, you know, USA Triathlon sanctions roughly 4,300 events, and there's pretty stringent uh, safety standards and watercraft and response teams. There's a whole pretty robust process uh, to ensure that uh, we make the race as, as safe as possible. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a, a whole protocol and a process that's, that's followed. Uh, yes, I, mean, I think I think that uh, you know, you know surprise. Yes, I mean you know there were there were other cities that were uh, were very very aggressive in the process and. Very good question. <laughs> you, 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 you know, I I haven't seen. No. I don't I don't recall seeing no, the no. proposed no. the course, but uh, no. okay. Next question. <laughs> what? No, no, it's not going to be. Or no, it's not going to. Uh, yes, yes, I know. Yes, yes. Sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the the approximate dates. You know, there's about uh, there's several different races, and it's the 23rd to the 28th. I think for, for us, uh, for the calendar, as, as later, the better, because we can spread a little bit the, all the series, huh? because it's the grand final should be the last one. Then I think it's uh, one week is, makes uh, a big difference for us. But I understand that the weather conditions, I mean, that's, that's why it's so difficult for us just also to find. Sometimes it's, it's not possible. I mean, at the end of September, for example, it's not possible to do it in, in Central uh, Europe, probably. I mean, it could be very cold. Uh, and, this and, is a very, very... And, and my understanding is that just coincided with a, a better period to fill up hotels. Remember, triathletes eat yes. a lot, so <laughs> your restaurants should stock up. <laughs> Next question. Brad? We we'll, we have a we're starting that discussion uh, next week, but we certainly see this as being an integral part. I mean, if we follow the pattern that we used, we used the uh, the race in, in London as our first qualifier, and San Diego as our second qualifier. Uh, you know, soon we have the same format. This will clearly be a qualifier, and we did prior to that. As any any athlete, U.S. athlete that finished uh, top nine was an automatic qualifier. So we I suspect we'll do something along the same lines. I think yes. Following your your, your question, I think uh, because I, I I wanted to highlight that will be uh, always we have all the best in the in the in the starting line, but especially especially this one uh, the year before, we will have all of them, and many many countries will do the selection. Probably. You know, it, it, I don't know. You know, <laughs> it, it will clearly be the, the most competitive race in the world that year. Given it's a the grand final, it's already the most competitive race. B, it's the start of the qualification period for the Olympics, so it, this will be a high stakes race. 
la, next year, I, I suppose, we are trying to do it as, as soon as possible. I think the, the, the uh, International Olympic Committee will uh, give us the permission, let's say, certificate the, the process, I think not before fa February next year. Then if it's possible to start the season next year in April with, uh, with the qualification process, that's what we are going to do. Excuse me? Still, I don't. I we don't know, but I, I suppose that could be in in fifteen. Yeah. So effectively, could be. You know, this, there's two different things. One is the the points qualification, which I think Marisol was discussing. The other is each national federation determines their own qualification process. But a grand final. The Olympic Olymp Committee. Prior, was wrong. Right. The, <laughs> right. Okay. Correct. So the, each national federation, and most of them will use a grand final in Olympic year as the in pre Olympic year as the key race. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else? Okay, I'd like to remind everyone that we'll have our, our transition demo uh, right here in the back with our youth athletes from the Peterson Performance Youth Triathlon Team. That's a mouthful. Um, so please do stick around for that. It's kind of cool. It's a, a great photo op. The speakers will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews as well if anybody wants to talk to them individually. Um, so I just, I'd like to thank St Sam and his entire staff at the Sports Commission, especially uh, Katie Van Landingham. Um, for their help in putting this press conference together. Uh, Christina Sparks from Harry Carey's uh, as well uh, was instrumental, and our own Lindsay Wiskowski um, for all their help in, in organizing today's press conference. Once again, we appreciate you guys being here today for this announcement, and uh, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming. It's going to be exciting.